Greetings of peace. Assalamu alaikum. We are in New Jersey filming in front of a live audience and we have an incredible topic as we always do. Now for the university audience, people sometimes they come to the university, they come to the school and you know what? You can relate to this when you're studying hard but then you have maybe a friend who can help you excel or that friend can help you maybe cut class and then you end up drifting off and then you end up flunking out. Well, what about flunking out on a bigger scale? And now you end up failing the test, the test that the Creator is testing us with. So we're going to be talking about this very important topic, how not, how to pass your exams at school, but also pass the test of life with my next guest when we come back here. We got a surprise for you. He's been on the Dean Show before. He's back with us again with our brother. I won't tell you his name until I come back. Sit tight, don't go anywhere, here on the Dean Show. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Buenos dias, buenos noches, buenos noches, mi amigos. Boricua, how's it going? Todo bien, gracias a Dios, alhamdulillah. So most people, they know you, they remember we did a show with you, Wesley. Yes. And uh, this was uh, talking about your story on how you came to Islam. Correct. How you been since then? Alhamdulillah, everything has been well, alhamdulillah. Everything is great. Now, just recap, for those that haven't watched that show that we did just in in a condensed version tell us a little bit you know about your story uh you know how you ended up coming over to islam from the, your previous life um real brief uh basically i was born christian uh parents first generation in this country um when i was around hit my teens early teens around seventh grade i started to stray um stopped going to church my grandmother and aunt were the most religious people in my family um they were the ones who used to take us to church and keep us on task um, but once I hit seventh grade, I started drinking, partying. As I basically increased in grade and age, basically it became worse. Um, until I hit maybe about 17, 18, and basically I had crashed hard. I was crashed my car drunk. I got into fights and almost was killed um, after being jumped a few times. Um, and life just progressed to get, very, to get worse. Um, around 19, 20, I joined a gang called Zulu Nation because there was a young man who lived in my house who was a foster child by the name of Edgar, um, who was part of this gang. He took us there, introduced us uh, to this gang, Zulu Nation, and there we met a brother named Abdul Aziz, who I came home from prison, who was also Puerto Rican, and he invited us to his home. He said, can you bring me to, to my house? And you know, when we got to his house, he invited us up for some tea and some biscuits and cookies and stuff like this, and he began to talk to us about the concept of Tawheed, the oneness of God. And after hearing that concept, going back to him a few times or several times and talking about this concept of Tawheed, the oneness of God, we ended up realizing that Islam was the religion that we definitely wanted to choose and the religion for us and we became Muslim. Would you say that this person that you got around, now this was a good friend, a good companion, someone that helped you now uh, explain to you what the truth was, so you got around some good company. I got around semi-good company, uh -huh. semi-good company, and the reason I say that is because I think he knew many of his shortcomings coming home from prison, um, and because he knew his shortcomings and he wanted good for us, once he gave us the foundation, and he knew that we had the foundation, and then he gave us the tools so that we can go on and, and continue learning and growing, but and then he removed himself from the picture because today when I think back at that point, I feel that he wasn't ready to take on that responsibility of leadership for us. I see, yes. So people can relate. I was talking about when I opened the program that when you're studying hard in school, you can have good friends that encourage you and they're good companions. They study with you, they push you, and then you end up excelling. But on the flip side, you can have some bad friends and maybe now they're more concerned about going to the frat party. They're more concerned about doing other things and now you end up flunking out, right? But then I compared it to the test of life. So we want to talk about in this episode the value of having good company and really, you know, what Islam says about this and how you now, as a Muslim, how you've benefited from obviously being around the right company. Yeah. Well, the major thing that comes to mind is a hadith or a narration by our beloved Prophet, may peace and blessings of God be upon him. Where he said, فَلْيَنْظُرْ أَحَدُكُمْ مَنْ يُخَالِلْ فَالْرَجُلُ عَلَى دِينِ أَخْخَلِيلِ فَالْرَجُلُ عَلَى دِينِ خَلِيلِ He said, let each one of you beware of who you befriend. For rarely a man is upon the religion of his friend. And we have a similar saying 
amongst you know just the people of here in America, right? Tell me who you who you hang with, and I'll tell you who you are, right? Birds of a flock fly together, and it's a true statement. Um, and this particular statement, as a Muslim, personally it helped me a lot because when I accepted Islam, my company at the time was bad company, right? We would go out drinking together, we would go out smoking together, we would go out fornicating together, we would go out selling drugs together, and this is what I was accustomed to being around. So when I accepted Islam and I became a Muslim, nothing really changed except that now I believed in a new faith. I changed my belief from worshiping Jesus, which I really never worshiped Jesus because I had a problem with it, but now to worshiping Allah, God Almighty Himself. But when I realized that in order for me to change, I had to change my company. And it wasn't until I changed my company that life began to change for me. And I began to see something sweeter and something better at the end of the road. Mm -hmm. Now, is it true that those people who are of good company, those same friends that you have, that you befriend in this life, it reminds me of Hadith where the Prophet said that you know, a person will be with whom he loves. Yes. So now if you're hanging around with people who are not reminding you of Allah, your mission in life, your creator, you know, they're reminding you more about you know, some of the bad things that are out there. You know, where, where do you think, where's the end result of that? As opposed to the end result, if you have people reminding you about the purpose of life, you know, Salat, you know, uh, uh, Hajj, you know, and all the other you know, beautiful things that we should be doing. So what, the opposing. Well, if you have that person who's always calling you to good, then naturally you're going to end up doing good, right? Because the Prophet gives another example. He says that good company is like being around the musk seller, the person who sells sweet musk. You either come to him and you buy something from him and you benefit from it, or you leave from his shop smelling good, right? Or the evil, or you be with the evil person, and he's like the one who makes the sword, the blacksmith, right? You either your clothes get burnt from the fire being jumped off, or you leave with this bad odor, right? And this is what it's like in life. And one of the most important things that comes to mind for me is a scenario, a true scenario, and that I and I'm a teacher, so I always use these scenarios to try to educate my students. A scenario of a college student um, who went to a college who didn't have a big MSA. So she didn't have a lot of Muslims around her. And the only company she had were non-Muslims. So naturally, they want to party, they want to have fun, and she didn't want to feel left out. And because she didn't want to feel left out, they told her, come with us to a party one day. So she goes to the party. And at the party, she's drinking soda, juice, she's not dancing with men, she's not jumping around in the party, she's not drinking alcohol, she's trying to hold on to her faith, but she's a little ignorant of the scenario that she's in. So when she's not paying attention, and of course her friends are partying and jumping around and dancing and having fun while she's watching, she's not paying attention to her drink and they put something in a drink. And her friends are not paying attention to her. Now, her drink was spiked, the men who spiked her drink took her. They raped her all night long, three men. After this, alhamdulillah, all praise is due to God, that they were caught because they recorded it. But when they called her father, the police officer in the morning, and her father got the call and said, we have some bad news. Your daughter was just raped and molested last night. Her father caught a heart attack and died on the spot. Something that now this young woman has to deal with. A bad choice, perhaps, going out with these friends who were leading her to something that wasn't good and an outcome, a cause and an effect. Her father dying, not only her being molested, but now losing her father on top of that. SubhanAllah. And this is a true story true now. Story. And this is, this is something now that from this you know, experience we can all benefit to help you know, us to not fall in these traps. We got so much more to talk about. We're going to go ahead and take off from there when we come back on this story. I got some questions to ask you here on The Dean Show. Don't go anywhere. Please subscribe to The Dean Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support The Dean Show by making a donation in the link below. Welcome back to The Dean Show. And now this story you're talking about. So let, let's go ahead and, and diagnose this again. So this was a, a, um, a, a woman, Muslim. Muslim woman 
she ended up um, going to, she was called by some not so good friends to go to a party. Correct. And at this party, you know, some men actually put some drugs in her drink. Correct. We call it, they spiked her drink that you call it. Correct. And it's kind of just, uh, so how, see this is, sometimes people they look at Islam as being too stringent and strict, right? But how now can people relate because usually it's the end consequences that people don't think about it, right? So there are some, you know, as they say, you know, a doctor can tell you, you know, an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure because once you got the ailment, the disease, it's hard sometimes to get rid of it. So would you say that now a lot of times these guidelines, these perimeters are set by the Creator so you don't end up going outside in an area where you can end up having something real harmful to you, to, that's going to happen to you. So would you say all these things are set from Allah out of His love for us? Definitely out of His love, His mercy, His generosity, His kindness, because ultimately He is the Creator. He is the all-knowing, right? the all-wise. He knows why He sent these laws to us. He knows why He sent these regulations to us. And definitely they're for our well-being. Sometimes, especially the youth, they don't realize it. And sometimes, unfortunately, they have to realize it through a tough situation like this. But then you have the opposite side of the card, like he was talking about, where maybe it was a, there, there, are, there are youth who go out and they partake in these evil acts. She wasn't partaking. She was just ended up a victim. But then you have times where the youth partake in the evil acts, and then maybe they end up dead. Maybe they end up in jail, right? And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, That indeed, all actions will be judged by the last one that you've done. So now imagine that you go out and you make that wrong decision and you die doing that decision. You die fornicating. You die on drugs. You die drinking. You die partying. When your Lord has been so merciful to you and given you a message, given you a book, given you guidance so that he can try to guide you to his paradise, guide you to his kingdom so that you can live there and reside in peace and tranquility, in love with the king himself. SubhanAllah. It's amazing. Now let's say you have Fatima in front of you right now, or you have Muhammad, for instance. You know, you have a brother or sister, and they're possibly in the future, maybe they end up in this predicament where they have someone who's enticing them, who's tempting them and saying, come on, look, I'll pay for the door, I'll pay for the drinks, I'll pay for the gas, just to get them to this party, right? Which is common in university settings. Many people just go to college for the experience. What would you tell them? What advice would you give them? I would tell them, stay away. Because yes, it sounds like fun. Yes, it may be fun for the moment. But at the end of the day, we are exchanging it for eternal bliss over temporary bliss. And why would you give up something that's eternal for something that's temporary? Right? This life is temporary. It's going to go away. The only thing that we're promised in this life is death. Right? All of us are going to meet it. And when we meet death, then we have to meet our Creator. And when we meet our Creator, we're going to be judged for what we've done. And the injustice is only against ourselves. So yes, if you hold on, develop ways to have fun, right? Some people think that Islam, as Muslims, we can't have fun, right? But who said we can't have fun? Our Creator didn't tell us we can't have fun. We can have fun. We just have parameters, and we don't have the same type of fun, or, or what people think is fun, right? Getting drunk is not fun. Right, you wake up with a hangover, you wake up with a headache, something maybe like me one time I got drunk, I crashed my car. I almost killed myself. Right? These are consequences. Right? So sometimes the Muslims just need to be more creative and develop ways and be leaders because they have to have the identity of I'm a Muslim and I'm proud to be a Muslim. And I don't need to follow you in order to, be, to have fun. But I can go ahead and be the leader in that and inshallah ta'ala, if you don't want to join me, then that's your loss. Because I believe that I'm the most worthy friend that you should have. Now she says that, look, you know, she's ha having a hard time because all the boys keep telling her, they're teasing her at school, oh, you're so beautiful, just take it off, why are you wearing this? Or other girls who aren't wearing hijab, say, look, you're, you're giving up your youth, you're beautiful, God made you beautiful, she'll show your beauty. What would you say? You're a diamond, right? Do you go out and leave your diamond on the table for everybody to just look at it and be able to take it from the table? No. That, that, that beauty is for you, right? And beauty is not exposing yourself, right? If you have to expose yourself to find beauty, 
then there's an internal problem. You may have a problem with yourself. Maybe you don't think that you're beautiful, right? Because you find a lot of people, women who have to expose themselves, you'll find that it's, it's, two, it's, it's two-sided, right? They expose themselves because they think that they have to expose their beauty, but and then when the man looks at her, he goes, she goes, why? Why are you disrespecting me? Well, why are you showing yourself to me that way? Why are you so surprised? Right, I just seen a video the other day. They did a video with a woman who went, walked the streets with her clothes off, and everybody, hey, mommy, can I talk to you? Come here, psst, psst, you look good. One man walked with her for a block, right? And when she covered herself up, everybody respected her. No one said nothing to her. To prove that when you cover yourself and you cover your beauty, that you're going to get the respect that you deserve. But when you flaunt yourself, flaunt your body, then they're only going to seek after that and not what's up here in your mind. Yeah, they've actually they've uh, done a study. We're actually showing some images now where the woman who actually wore hijab, and these are statistical scientific studies that they've done, they actually have a better self-esteem. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So uh, before we go to break now, that's interesting. You read my mind. I was going to ask you about this video because it actually went viral. Yes. So you had non-Muslim women do it. They had she was out there for ten hours, right? Yep. And exactly, you had just men just whistling, you know, taunting. And this was during the day. But now you're walking at night. Some the, the last guy was going with her for about five minutes, wasn't yeah. he? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just kept walking with her. And all he has to do now, intoxicated during the night, just push her in the alley, and that's it. It's over. That's it's it. it. It's over. But then uh, there were some Muslims also who did the same experiment. And and then again reiterating at the first. Point, taunting, whistling, and whatever, uh, obscene remarks. But then we had the, the lady put on the, um, the uh, hijab, yes. right? Not showing the, uh, uh, revealing everything, and she, nobody said anything to her. Nobody said a word to her. It was just simple respect. Everybody seen her and kept on walking. Yeah. No whistling, no taunting, no a baby. And who wants to be talked to that way? Yeah. Who wants to be talked to that way? You want to be respected for who you are. You want to be respected for your mind, for you and you want people to love you for who you are and not for maybe something that God has blessed you with of beauty. We're gonna be right back with more here on The Dean Show. Don't go anywhere. Please subscribe to The Dean Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support The Dean Show by making a donation in the link below. Back here on The Dean Show and now you hit it dead on now. You uh, spoke about the importance of good companionship and is, is this kind of where when you have those good friends like when you're slipping now your good friend helps to pull you back yes right yep. as opposed to now you're slipping and you got bad friends and they're, they're not pulling you back into the good zone they push you into the the bad zone yeah they further dra they're dragging you further underneath yeah and i'll give you a good example um of another muslim unfortunately a young man maybe about 1920 um, hanging out with the wrong crowd, and his friend steals a car at gunpoint and comes to pick him up. The Muslim boy knows the car is stolen. He jumps in the car. A little while later, the cops catch him. They get him down in the precinct, right? The normal behavior is separate the two of them. Hey, I have your friend in the other room. Tell me what really happened, and we'll make a deal. And the Muslim guy, he's thinking, my friend is never going to tell on me. So I'm going to hold off. I don't have anything to say. They go in the other room, and his, and his non-Muslim friend, the one who stole the car at gunpoint, he said he did everything. He was the one who took the car at gunpoint. But he was the one who did it. But he was the one who did it. He took the deal. The young Muslim boy is in jail to today. Bad company. Bad company, wrong time, wrong place, with the wrong person, and now he's paying for it. And this is the case. This is what happens over and over and over and over again. You know, and that was why when I realized I had that epiphany, I was sitting on the porch in my house with my friends, smoking marijuana, drinking beer, right? And I'm Muslim. I got a kufi on my head to distinguish myself as a Muslim. And it's nighttime, and I begin to look into the sky, and I said, if I don't change, how do I know that this is not going to be the last time that I'm going to be here living on Earth? That 
this moment, maybe God will take my life and this is how my life is going to end. High. With these knuckleheads. All right? I told them, get up and leave. Get out. And they were like, oh, you get drunk, you get high, you don't know how to act. I said, no, this is the first time life has ever been clear for me. You need to get up and go. And when they left, I made the house my the masjid. I began going to the masjid on a daily basis. And uh, my friends and my company became the imams, the brothers in the masjid, all the way up to today that I can say that some of my best friends are scholars of the religion. Allah has replaced all of the evil with people of knowledge. People who, if they see me slipping, they're going to call me to what's right and help pick me up. They're not going to say, yeah, come on, let's continue doing bad. And if I fall, more than likely that bad friend, he's going to leave me there. And he's going to keep on going because he doesn't want no part of it. But that good friend, he sees you fall, he's going to pick you up, or he's going to sit there with you to find out how can we resolve the situation. Right. Now you've also you've also traveled, you know, overseas to study Arabic. You're also at the Mishkat University, uh, and you're almost you've almost completed it, correct? Correct. This is Islamic studies. Correct. Best BA in Islamic studies. Mashallah, Alhamdulillah. So now let's say you have three Muslims, and they're you know uh, we know Islam is the fastest growing way of life in the world today, and and you have a new Muslim, and now you have some friends that brought you into Islam. Let's give a live example. They're Muslim. They've been a Muslim for, for a while. You're a new Muslim now. And now it's been several years. You don't, you know, you come in, you don't know much. But now you're seeing that these are Muslims. But now, unfortunately, some uh, are indulging in things that they shouldn't be indulging in. Let's say these, they're, they're cursing, they're swearing. You know, they're not adhering to many of the guidelines. At what point? But you, they kind of helped you along. You know, maybe they even helped you take shahada. You follow me? At what point do you say, hold up, I'm not really taking it to the next level, right? I'm not increasing my iman. You follow me? Uh, my, my character is not getting at also at that next level. What do I do? You're in a tricky situation. You know, you've grown attached to them, but you're seeing that, look, you know, they, they're, they're not helping me improve to a level I should be at. You know, honestly, the, the easiest answer is you may have to change your company. No matter how, you may not like it, but in order to make that change, sometimes you just have to change your company. Allah says in the Quran, ma bi hatta ma bi anfusihim. We will never change the condition of a people until they change what's in themselves first. So sometimes you have to change you first. And sometimes when you realize, right, as a Muslim, we should always be looking at ourselves on a monthly basis on a daily basis, on a yearly basis. This was something that the companions always did. They always did self-reflection, retrospection. Where am I compared to where I was at yesterday? And if there's no development, then I need to check myself. I need to figure out why there's no development. I need to go ahead and start problem solving, right? And when you find out what's the problem, right away you take it and you remove it out of the equation because that's the only thing that's gonna cause you to grow. So what should you be now monitoring? You're with in the company that you're with, your iman should be going up, shouldn't it? Iman, your faith should definitely be going up. It should be increasing. I'm not saying in large spurts, but it should be steady. It should be going up steady. Yeah, it should be decreasing now. Well, the, well we, it goes, goes up and down, down but I, I, I'm talking about every time you get around a certain people now, yeah. you feel like, you know, you already maybe lose your iman. Yeah. That's a bad sign. That's a bad sign. Right? So around the company that you're with, they should be reminding you about your creator. You should be in good zikr circles. But um, if you're in a company now that, again, is indulging in sin, indulging in things that are displeasing to the Creator, that's where you probably want to distance yourself. You want to start distancing yourself. And like you said, the Prophet Sallam, he said that Iman increases and decreases. It's like a roller coaster, right? So you go up, you come down, you go up, you come down. But on those peaks that you're coming down, you realize, I need to go back up again. Right? And you catch yourself so that you can start going back up again. And that's where you have to just go ahead and start making some of those changes. Example, you go to a certain person's house and they're watching, for instance, uh, Peace TV. They're watching the Dean Show. They're watching right. some good lectures. Iman starts to go up. That's right. right? You, you start feeling really good. Yeah. No negative side effects. But now you go to the other person's house and they got MTV. They've got the music awards. They got the daytime, nighttime dramas, a lot of cursing going on. And you just, you know, you forget about Akhira and you just concentrate on dunya. And now, you know, you're seeing 50 Cent and the bling blings out there. And, you know, you start 
forgetting about your response. Salat passes, yep. you follow me? So this is time. And, split. and you have two choices. You can split or you can first advise, right? Because you realize that there's a situation, right? Yeah. And you can advise and tell the person, listen, if you want me to come over, if you want me to hang out with you, if you want to be together, I want to hang out with you. You my boy, you my man, you my homie, whatever you, however you want to say it, you my brother, right? And I want to be together with you, I want to hang out with you, I enjoy the time that we spend together, but I don't want to do this. We can do something else, right? Because this here, I think, is just going to get us both in trouble. And we need to be that, you know what I mean, that, that aid for one another. You help me, I help you. And if they accept it, then you've done a good deed. Now you get the reward for him leaving that as well. Right? But if he says, nah, you corny, get out of here. If you want to leave, then just leave. Then you say, okay, man, you know, it really hurts me, it really bothers me that that's the way you feel, but you have my number. Anytime you want to hang out and you don't want to do this, give me a call and I'll come through and we can hang out. And inshallah, and then maybe that'll cause him to be affected with somewhere down the line if you guys really have a good relationship like that. Because at times, sometimes people are, in the beginning, they're stubborn, right? But sometimes they reflect after a while and say, you know what, Abdullah, he is a good dude. And I do want to spend time with him. I do want to hang out with him. All right, I can give up the MTV. I can give up, you know what I mean, watching those late night novelas where the women are half dressed, right? So that we can get together. So you just have to make that choice, man. I, I would first suggest, give that advice, try to help change your brother into a better situation. Even if he's not a Muslim, you can still do the same thing. I do the same thing with my family. You want me to come by? No drinking. You want me to come by? No smoking weed. I come by and hang out. What you do after I leave, that's your problem. But when I come through, these are my expectations. And if you meet them, I come through and we hang out. We can spend time together, because I love you, right? So, and most of the time, my family, my friends, they say, okay, come through. We want you to come through. We want you to hang out. And after I leave, they'll go ahead and party and they'll do whatever it is that they want to do. But while I'm there, we'll go ahead and have our fun the way we need to have fun without those things involved. Beautiful, because you're either getting dawah given to you or you're giving the good dawah. Yep. So monkey see, monkey do. For sure. <laughs> yeah, so you want to be doing good, right? That's right. Yeah, alhamdulillah. And the end reward now is, okay, you're a good company, and hopefully God willing, if you're at the university, wherever you're at, you're going to end up excelling? You're going to definitely excel. And even greater than that is that narration that you said, where the Prophet ﷺ said that indeed you'll be with those whom you love. This doesn't exclude the Prophet. If you love the Prophet and you follow him and you obey him and you practice what you're supposed to practice from the teachings, then you too can be with him in the paradise on the level that he's in, inshallah, enjoying his company as well. That's uh, al mar'u ma'a man ahab. A person will be with whom he loves, but now if you love the Prophet, you love the Creator, you'll be, you'll see your Creator in Jannah, you'll be with the Prophet in Jannah, but now you'll pass those exams hopefully with good company. But now we talked about, and before we go, failing the ultimate test now. We're being tested in this life, isn't it? Bad company, you have a great chance of failing the test. Yeah, and if you fail the test, it's something that you can never recover from. You can't go back next semester and retake the course all over again, retake the exam, try to boost your GPA back up. Once you failed, failure means death and punishment in the grave when you meet your Lord and your book is given to you in your left hand instead of your right hand because in your right hand it means that you've done good and your left hand it means that you've done evil and you stand there for that judgment and your Lord tells you, you failed. And now because of your failure, after me sending you so many messages, I basically gave you the answers to the test and you still didn't use the answers that I gave you for the test and you still failed the test when I provided you with the answers. And the only outcome now is hellfire because of it, instead of paradise and bliss. That's right, thank you very much for being with us, You're advising welcome. the audience and those who aren't here with us today. Hopefully, God willing, we can internalize this and take benefit from it. Jazakallah. Jazakallah. Salaam alaikum. And you got to hear the beautiful advice, good companionship, because this companionship that helps you, reminds you about the purpose of life, why you're here, when it's time for Salat, you have that brother or sister reminding you to pray, instead of now those people that you're with, you start forgetting about the ultimate goal, 
in life and you start missing the Salat, you start staying up late and you miss Fajr and you start drifting off and then you end up at the end in places you shouldn't be and you heard these incredible stories now really sad and devastating and now they take you away and it just takes one traumatizing event like this to ruin your life. So if you're in these situations where you have companions that aren't helping you excel to become a better person each and every day, maybe it's time to separate and maybe come back when they're ready because maybe they're not ready now. So you advise to good, you call to good and if they're not setting the call then you gotta move on to those who are gonna help you to develop to be the best human being that you can be and inshallah and we can all be in Jannah together. We'll see you next time here in the Dean Show. Subscribe if you haven't already. Follow us Facebook, Twitter and we'll see you next time. Until then, peace be with you.